There is a major effort taking, uh, taking uh, place to curb free speech in this country, irrespective of our Constitution, our Bill of Rights. And free speech advocates say the United Nations has come down on precisely the wrong side. The United Nations has adopted what it calls a resolution combating defamation of religions. The United Nations now wants to make that anti-blasphemy resolution binding on member nations, including, of course, our own. That would make it a crime in the United States if the United Nations were to have its way to criticize religion, in particular, Islam. Kelly Pilgrim has our report. The UN General Assembly is considering a binding resolution urging member states to make it a crime to criticize Islam. What they would do would be to make it illegal to uh, put out a movie uh, or a, write a book or a poem which somebody could say was defamatory of uh, Islam. The so-called anti-blasphemy resolution would call on governments to pass their own laws to determine what can be said about religion in public. The resolution urges states to provide within their respective legal and constitutional systems adequate protection against acts of hatred, discrimination, intimidation and coercion resulting from defamation of religion. But the U.S. says the concept of defamation of religion has another meaning. While appearing in name to promote tolerance, the implementation of this concept actually fosters intolerance and has served to justify restrictions on human rights and fundamental freedoms. Even talking about the influence of Islam on terrorism could be called criminal under this resolution if adopted by an individual country. You are entitled to say that in America but not if the UN has its way. They would criminalize that kind of practice and they are trying to do it elsewhere around the world. A group of 57 organization of Islamic countries, the largest bloc at the United Nations, has been pushing it out of concern, it says, over anti-Islamic behavior, saying, this resolution is a major step towards sensitizing the international community on the serious impact of defamation of religions. Last December, the General Assembly passed it as a non-binding resolution. And this year, a binding resolution is expected to be introduced as early as March. Human rights activists say its influence is already being felt. There have been a number of prominent cases most recently in India, uh, for instance, the editor of a newspaper um, was charged um, for reprinting um, an article that had initially been printed in the UK. While the article mentioned the three major religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, the editor was arrested for, quote, hurting the religious feelings of Muslims. Now, essentially what this resolution would do is to urge countries to pass laws in their country, which would be unconstitutional in the United States, and basically violate the spirit of many Western judicial systems, Lou. Yeah, I, I, a couple of questions. One is, of those 57 nations uh, supporting this uh, uh, resolution, how many of them are democracies? Uh, I couldn't tell you, but many of them are Islamic countries. Uh, Pakistan has led the, uh, the charge on this and has, uh, has tabled this so resolution. They're, so they're not democracies, and they, uh, they're fascinated with their own uh, uh, precepts about uh, what would constitute uh, the way to run a nation not like ours. Uh, is there any, any discussion or perhaps of simply uh, if the United Nations insists on doing this, sort of bulldozing the building, getting it out of the way and letting them go find another place to live? It wasn't really discussed in my, uh, perhaps, my discussions today. <laughs> well, perhaps we can raise that as an alternative to impinging on our, our, uh, our constitutional uh, liberties. Uh, Kitty Pilgrim, thank you very much. Appreciate it from the United Nations. What a place. Well, joining me now with more on the U.N. effort to stifle free speech, uh, to squelch it, really, is Christopher Hitchens. He's Vanity Fair columnist, author of God is Not Great, How Religion Poisons Everything. Christopher, I, I, I have to say, first, welcome. Great to have you back with us. Secondly, how dare these people uh, attempt such a thing? Well, first, thank you for having me back. And second, look, the claim of Islam is that it is the last and final revelation from God to humanity. That's quite a big claim to make. That you don't need another book after the Quran. Uh, right. You don't need any more evidence. You don't need any more argument. It's all done for you. Now, that's okay if people want to claim that. But now they want to say, if you have any 
difficulty with this mm -hmm. uh, idea, if you have any doubts about it, you're not allowed to express them. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you do, you are insulting us. Uh, you're making us feel hurt. Now, just imagine the, those two claims put together. One, a fantastic claim, and the other, a fantastic claim that you can't challenge. That is totalitarianism defined. It's a rape uh, and butchery of the First Amendment of our Constitution. Uh, it, it's it's also being joined, though, Christopher, by a lot of nations that are not Islamic, uh, and there seems to be a, a, a strong uh, a move forward, and it's already, in, in point of fact, been approved at this level by the United Nations. I have to say that we got, we're reaching a point in the United States where we've got a group of people who will go around clucking, saying, oh, yes, this will be just fine, uh, irrespective of our constitutional rights, because there's some, you know, there, uh, we have Americans now, there is a, a movement afoot in this country for hidebound orthodoxy of all sorts of uh, extremes, uh, politically, uh, religiously, in which people say, you know, the heck with the Constitution, uh, there are higher uh, issues at No, no, you're, you're, you're quite right about that. I mean, when... Um when Salman Rushdie was uh, sentenced to death by a senile uh, theocrat in Iran uh, for writing a novel, um, the Archbishop of Canterbury, um, His Holiness the Pope, um, certainly the Sephardic chief rabbi of Israel and many other religious figures joined with Khomeini, not in exactly endorsing the fatwa, right. uh, the death sentence, but in saying the problem was blasphemy, uh, that they agreed with the Ayatollah to that extent. The problem was not the, the destruction of free speech and free expression, but, but um, the hurt feelings of the religious. This is a common uh, problem. In, in, in Britain, there's a blasphemy law that only protects Christians. For example, it's a big source of Muslim grievance. But when you clear away all these discrepancies, there's one overwhelming thing that's happening, um, and it's this. There are, there are Muslims who are prepared to use violence at the drop of a hat if a cartoon is published in Denmark if the Pope makes an off-the-cuff remark, a stupid one in my opinion, about Byzantium uh, or the Crusades, th they go straight to violence, but yet you cannot criticize them for being violent, lest you be accused of blasphemy. Yeah, and it is, it is well, Islam, of course, uh, Christianity, whatever it may be, uh, I, the United Nations is getting a bit burdensome, it seems to me, to anyone who's interested in freedom. Uh, whether it be through the World Trade Organization, whether it be all sorts of institutions, organizations ranging an issue from global warming to uh, anti-blasphemy. Yes. Uh, this is becoming a totalitarian, authoritarian uh, organization. And political yes, which, correctness nothing is to really do, nothing an effort to, to control, yeah. uh, more, seemingly to me at least, uh, nothing more than an effort to control thought. Nothing to do with its remit either, which is the settlement of disputes among member states by peaceful means. Of course, nothing to do with that at all. Um, and remember, uh, thanks to Eleanor Roosevelt, all member states or applicants for membership of the UN were not compelled, but were strongly urged to sign the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, right. which, among other things, protects freedom of expression. And, it's and the, the countries that refused could still join, but remember that they were the then Soviet Union uh, and Saudi Arabia. Those were the countries that said we, we would rather not have to think of universal human rights. Those are universal parts. human rights exist whether religion uh, yeah. recognizes them or not. And we have to stand up for this. Yeah. And we have to better start standing up for it now, I would say, against theocracy. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, uh, you know, in the course of the last several days, uh, to my knowledge, I've been the only one in the national, uh, I will put it this way, electronic media uh, that has uh, challenged uh, Reverend Al Sharpton on the issue of the First Amendment, seeking the firing uh, and the actually the intervention uh, of the federal government on the New York uh, Post because of a, a cartoon that was lame, as I've said, insensitive, and, 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 and I thought a uh, demonstration of bad judgment, but not racist. Where in the world has the national liberal media been on that issue? It was a very crummy cartoon, I, I have to say. Absolutely. But... but um... I can't imagine what they were doing. It, it, it wasn't it, it, another crime, by the way. It wasn't funny. I mean, can we just say that that's also an offense? Oh, I started out with lame. Extreme, yeah. Um, um, being unfunny is a fantastic failure in a cartoonist. <laughs> and but I think we should, not we should have people's it's heads well for beyond, every time they don't perform. The federal, the federal government has no competence in these matters. Right. And it can't be solicited for this. Event. Now, just stroll back a bit. I've been to Friday prayers in Tehran right. several times. Chris, I'm going to have to leave you at prayer. Organized, you organized, organized chanting, organized chanting of death to America, right. death to Britain, death to Israel. 
that its, its head of state is allowed to come to the UN. That's fine by me, but don't let them tell me that no. only those who criticize them are, no. are being blasphemous. No, I, 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 well, I have to say that I, my, my patience is ending primarily with the United Nations that's arrogant enough to think it uh, should uh, uh, leave us subservient to its uh, collective will. Christopher Hitchens, always good to have you here. Wish we had nice more time. Thank you. Okay. Well, we want to know what you think. Our poll question tonight is, do you believe the United Nations restriction of freedom of speech in the United States should be tolerated? Yes or no? Cast your vote at bluedoms.com. We'll have the results here later. 98% of you say the United Nations restriction of freedom of speech in the United States should not be tolerated. Uh, and I'm thinking about bulldozers, but that's an addendum.